guys, welcome back on my YouTube channel. My name is Ping Ping and I make Philippine travel updates, latest quarantine protocols, and US visa related information. For today's video, guys, I will discuss to you how to process your K1 visa for expedite request. So, in this video, guys, I will discuss the different criteria and how to expedite or how the different criteria how to expedite your K1 visa, what are the steps to expedite and what are the documents that you need to submit when you expedite your K-1 visa. If you are new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified of my next videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. By the way, guys, I made a time codes for this video. You can check on the description box below or on the pinned comment section for your easy reference. All right, guys, I would also like to say thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you to Jason and Lynn Harris. Thank you so much for subscribing on my YouTube channel and good luck on your K-1 visa petition. I would like to remind you of the following reminders from the USCIS. USCIS reminds everyone that considers all expedite requests on a case-by-case -case basis, requires documentation to support a request, and has the sole discretion to decide whether to grant or deny a request. Please remember guys that the USCIS and VC and the embassy in your country has a criteria in order for them to approve your expedite request. So what are the five uh, evaluation criteria of the USCIS uh, and National Visa Center or NVC and Embassy in order for them to approve your request. Fiancé or K visa applicants are allowed to make an expedite request if number one, there's a severe financial loss to person. I will explain that later what's the meaning of that. Number two, urgent humanitarian reasons, example, health problems or condition health condition number three compelling to the u.s government for example u.s military fiance will have immediate immediate deployment number four for instance if your k2 visa or children are nearing age 21 it means it's aging out you may request the consulate to set a quicker interview schedule so you can avoid issues with children aging out and number five criteria clear uscis error so that's the five criteria if your case is um among the five criteria that was mentioned a while ago then you can process a k1 visa expedite request right so let's discuss one by one the five uh, criteria for expedite request for your K-1 visa process. First criteria uh, for K-1 expedite is severe financial loss to person. What does it mean? It means the USCIS or National Visa Center or the Embassy uh, grants an expedite if there's a risk of severe financial loss to person if the immigration benefit is not granted with e normal processing time so example if you are paying for a attorney to process the petition and you paid a big amount of money already but the petition is still at the nvc for a long period of time or at the uscis or at the embassy so you can maybe process this um petition you can request for a immediate approval or interview if you can prove that you're already experiencing severe financial loss, okay? So you have to think about what sort of financial loss could the U.S. petitioner possibly face if the beneficiary wasn't granted a K-1 or K-2 visa immediately. Next criteria, guys, is urgent humanitarian reason. Example, health problem or condition this one guys is tested and proven if you want to request for k1 visa expedite request a lot of my friends are using this one and they got approved so what is the um, what are the case that you can consider it is under urgent humanitarian reasons or 
health problems or condition. Like for example, the petitioner has an illness and needs help from the beneficiary since he is living alone in here in the United States and he will undergo a severe or critical surgery or minor or major surgery. Or guys, the petitioner or the beneficiary or usually the petitioner guys, the petitioner develop anxiety while waiting for the beneficiary for too long. Yes, anxiety or depression guys. So in the in this case you can process your K1 visa to be expedited for the reason of health problems or health condition. But again, you need to show proof for this one. So guys, like you can get medical certificate from a competent medical practitioner. But so it's very easy. You can just get a um, certificate from your family doctor or something. I guarantee you guys, this one is tested and proven. That's another criteria that you can use. Next criteria guys is we have compelling to the US government. So this is very effective as well, especially if your fiance is a US military, your fiance is a US military and will have deployment as soon as possible. You can request for expedite process. So what are you going to do? For example, US military personnel can show documentation that they are going to be deployed soon as possible. Thus, you can request for K-1 visa expedite. So the petitioner or your fiance can speak to his commander officer, commanding officer, to get a written confirmation as a supporting document that your fiance will undergo a deployment in different country as soon as possible. Tested and proven 100%. It was mentioned in the website of the U.S. Embassy. They re they can uh, apply for a K-1 visa expedite if their fiancé will undergo deployment soon as possible. Next uh, criteria that you can use is for those who have K-2 guys. If, for instance, your K-2 visa for children are your K2 are nearing age 21, which you know will go over age or aging out. You may request the consulate to set a quicker interview schedule, so you can avoid issues with children aging out. So you can request for expedite if you have K2 with you. K1 and K2 will go interview together once it was. It will be approved. Now, last criteria that you can use is there is a clear error on the hand or on the part of the USCIS. So this one, guys, is also very rare because if you will point out the reason that there's so much delay, it's already out of the standard processing time, you know, the USCIS will only reply you with an email that this is because of the pandemic. There's so many backlogs that's happening, blah, 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 blah and you just wait so this is a very rare case but you can try if you have proof that it is clearly the error on the part of the uscis so guys the five criteria that was mentioned you can choose among the criteria if one of them you experience you can prove it then you can go ahead and process your k1 visa expedite request but guys so now when can you process expedite of your K-1 visa petition. In what stage? So there are three stages where Ian, you can still process or request for a K-1 expedite to expedite your K-1 visa petition. First one is uh, when your petition is still at the USCIS. And then second one is at the NVC stage or National Visa Center. Or when your petition is already at the Department of State Embassy or U.S. Embassy in your country. USAS, you can request the USCIS to expedite your I-129F with your initial I-129F petition. You prepare your request and send it along with your normal I-129F application. If they accept and approve, they will process your I-129F right away. If denied, they process your case whenever they normally get to it. 
And number two is any time after submitting your I-129 or K-1 visa petition. But before approval, if you don't send a request with your initial petition, you may send it any time after it's received by the USCIS. Reference your receipt number so they can properly identify your case. Again, they will read your request and see if it's worthy of immediate processing. Second one, guys, is at the NVC stage. How can you request uh, expedite if your K-1 is already at the NVC? At the NVC stage, your National Visa Center, you can request NVC to expedite your processing if you are currently at this stage. However, this is generally unnecessary as the NVC typically spends only four to six weeks to process petitions anyway. So guys, you can email to nvcexpedite at state.gov with the subject request for NVC expedite for NVC case number or what is your case number, you're right. The last one or the last uh, stage wherein you can request for K-1 visa petition to be expedited is at the U.S. Embassy in your country. For example, guys, you can process a request for K-1 visa expedite petition once you have a K-2 and it's aging out or it will soon be over age, over the age of 21 years old. So you can process to get an expedite interview once you have a K-2 who is aging out. Now guys, I will discuss to you how to make a request for your I-129F or K-1 visa petition to be expedited. Please remember, regardless where did, where did you submit your K-1 visa petition, regardless of the service center, and regardless of your U.S. embassy, where are you at or in what country are you applying for, the requests are all the same. They have all the same steps to process a K-1 visa request for expedite. Step one, guys, is identify which agency has your case. Example, in what stage? Is it in USCIS or in NVC stage or is it in the embassy where you want to have your interview? Or in For this one, guys, first identify which agency has jurisdiction over your case. Example, if you're still waiting for your I-129F approval, for example, then the USCIS has your case. If you've been approved and awaiting an interview, then the U.S. Embassy has jurisdiction over the case. Step two, guys, is follow the procedure for an expedite request. So follow the procedures of each stage. For example, above, we talk about the USCIS procedures. If your case is still in USCIS, they allow email. The U.S. Embassies, for example, they have a slightly different request procedure. Example, for U.S. Embassy in the Philippines, they allow requests through email as well. Step 3, guys, is prepare and send your request. According to the agency's procedure, whether physically mailed or sent digitally by email, prepare and send your request. Once prepared, signed, and ready, you may send your request. Be sure to include pertinent information so the agency can identify your case. Include receipt number, case number, and whatever details are appropriate. Addresses for USCIS, mail your pocket to the service center which currently holds your I-129F. For the U.S. Embassy, it's best to send it digitally, scanned, or via fax. Be sure to reference your case number and details of both yourself and partner. Tip, whenever you send a request, be sure to mark the top of your envelope letter or packet with expedite request in large form. Step four, guys, which is the last step, receive your responses, response, and proceed accordingly. But please take note that agencies takes about one to three weeks to fully read, review, analyze, and respond to your request. You have to wait for a maximum of three weeks or give it until one month or four weeks. So you have to wait patiently okay so guys what are the attached documents that you need to submit when you want to file for expedite request for your k-1 visa petition first document that you need is cover letter requesting for expedite of case number two proof of reason to expedite so five criteria you choose among the criteria which one 
you can apply for and you make sure to provide a proof for that. For example, health problem or health reason, you provide medical certificate. So another example, if your keto is aging out, then you provide um, by life birth for your keto. So letter from commanding officer. Number three documents that you need to submit is biographical passport page of your petitioner and the beneficiary. If you have K2, you also need to submit the bio biographical passport page of your K2 if it's only applicable. And the last one is proof of petition photocopy, NOAA 1, NOAA 2, whichever is available. So all right guys, that's the documents that you need to submit. You can generally request expedite processing by also contacting the USCIS contact center. The number is 1-800-375-5283. Alright guys, so that's it. I hope this video helps and you can comment down below if you want to share your K-1 visa expedite experience or if you can also ask questions. You can just comment down below. I'll try to. I will try to help you and response based on my knowledge and my ideas. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video and have a good one. Bye-bye.